Good, good, good morning, everyone. I am going on a little rant here because I'm a little bit fed up with people lying about Linux. Uh, I don't like when people are bullshitting. <laughs> I don't like when people are being messy and lying about Linux because I want people to use Linux, but I don't want them to get use it and have a false experience. Oh, sorry, not a false experience, expectation. So if I hype up Linux, and you try Linux and it's not up to the hype, you will get angry and bitch and moan and probably never try it again. Where if I'm honest about it and say, this is what you can expect, this is the pitfalls and so on and so on and so on. And you try it and you're like, yeah, this is what I expected. You may stick with it. It's human nature. If you're a gamer or if you want a product, any it could be whatever the fuck it is, and you're following the hype train on YouTube and stuff like that, and you get the product, it will never live up to the hype. You know, a new game that's AAA game that has been hyped up for fucking years. You get your hands on, you will always get disappointed. Where a lot of times all those small indie games that you barely hear anything of, a lot of them are actually not that good, but you think they are really good because they're hi you're not hyped up for them. So you have no real expectation or you were like, yeah, this may suck, but I'm giving it, you know, I'm giving it a fucking good try, a good college try, as they say. And you figure out, oh, it's actually decent. That's a positive experience. You get what I'm saying? If you sell them the expectation or undersell it a little bit, they will have a good experience trying it out. Where if you oversell it or overhype it, they will almost always have a bad experience or not satisfied experience. And I will just go over the headlines here, okay? Nine reasons why Linux might catch up with Windows and Mac OS in 2023. It, it's not even might, it will not happen. Linux catching up, if it's going to happen with any major open rating system is going to be done slowly over years probably a decade or so we don't have a decade or so in my humble opinion as a windows mac and linux user android or mobile phones tablets are going to take over the average consumer's life they are going to use that more and more heck Apple's computers nowadays is just an enlarged mobile phone or tablet. That's the technology behind it. But that's the future. A tablet or mobile phone you just put into a stand and your stand has keyboard, peripherals, up your fucking wazoo, screens, graphic cards, connected to it, if needed with the graphic cards. And you basically run, like we are doing right now, we run something like Samsung Dex, something like that from a tablet. That's the future. What we have, what we are going to do right now is we're going to slowly transition over to that by first making the internal hardware more mobile like if you want to mobile tablet like and then the operating system would follow that way so android which is not linux it's a fork of linux could be the future if you are going into the whole unix like system but we also have ios that's also a unix like system but anyway already in the first fucking sentence you can disregard everything this person is saying linux distros already well it's not well, okay well linux distros already did dominate the server world Already there, you have the biggest fucking fault ever. According to numbers you can go and find right now or watch my video, Linux is not 9% of the desktop uh, server market. You can find numbers and they are kind of credible numbers. I found tens, a lot of thousands, but 10, 20 sites that say the same thing. And if all the sites say the same thing, it must be kind of accurate, okay? But if you look at those numbers, the biggest place that you have in the server market is in the web server hosting area. And even there, they are not over 50%. They are like 38, 9 is kind of thing. It's big. It's not dominating. If you then take every category or server you can dream of and put it into one big pile and say, okay, if you're running a DNS server, file server, web server, virtual machine server, any any type of server configuration you can think of. If you compare Linux to other operating systems there, it's only about 18% where Windows is by far most used. If we are taking every service and putting them into one category, it's just called servers. I will not call that dominating, not even on the web server technology side where they are about 40%. I would call it being present. 40% is good, don't get me wrong, but it's not dominating. So when you see and hear people talk like that with the knowledge I just gave you, again, go look it up yourself. You can you can find sites to say that Linux is dominating in, in the server market and then you talk about one specific server role. That's not the server market. That's just one server role. Yes, Linux is dominating IoT devices, but your computer is not an IoT device. Heck, even your computer is not configured as a server. It's not running as a server. The task an operating system have to do as a server is vastly different between what a task an operating system have as a desktop. If it was not, 
why the fuck do you think the biggest operating system in the world have a server edition or an enterprise edition? If running a server was the same as running a desktop, we would not have Windows data server and stuff like that. We would just have Windows. Cost might force people to stick with older machines and install Linux. Not really. Prices on hardware has gone up and down and fluctuate all through the years. It's a, a, a normal everyday Linux fanboys excuse that, oh, prices are getting higher, therefore people stick with older hardware and stick with Linux. Here's the fact. People will stick with older hardware. Of course they will, but they will still run Windows on it. I know for a fact that a lot of people are still running Windows 8. They are still running Windows 7. They are still, fuck, some even on XP. They don't give a fuck about it being the end of life. They don't even know it. So just because your hardware is getting out of date, that don't mean, oh my God, my heart is getting out of date. I have to upgrade my Windows. No, they don't care. Or... Oh, I can't run Windows 10 on this machine. Well, I'm really perfectly happy with Windows, whatever version I'm running right now. It's not giving me any problems. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm sticking with it. That's the mentality of people. The path, path of re least resistance. You can't get the new version of Windows. And here's the thing. The Windows world don't look at, I need the new version of Windows. They don't give a fuck. 99 or 9 out of 10 people only upgrade Windows when they buy new hardware anyway. They stick with the Windows version coming with their system unless they get a pop-up up you know if you're running windows 10 oh you can in install windows 11 for free even there a lot of people don't even upgrade it click the button upgrade some do but not all the steam deck boosting is gaming no it's not it's really not nobody use the steam decks and think oh my god i'm gaming on linux people use the steam deck like they would use nintendo switch they use the Steam Deck because they want to play games while they're taking a shit. Or while their wife is hitting them in the balls in, in bed. That's what it is for them. It's a portable gaming device. It's not a portable Linux machine. So yes, Steam Deck or Proton may help us play better games or more games on Linux. But for the end consumer, that's not a fact. They don't even fucking care about it. For them, it's just a gaming console. PlayStation has been using FreeBSD since the 90s about. That has not helped gaming on fucking FreeBSD. Nobody has said like, yep. One of the most popular consoles in the world is using FreeBSD, therefore everyone will now go and play games on FreeBSD. There are so many things that go into that. Like, yeah, I may can play more games on Linux, but is, am I getting the same experience as on the Windows? All benchmarks and all testimonies for the most part say no. There are the odd game out that run better on Linux, but in general, you get a better gaming experience on the Windows. Plus, if you're a content creator, a lot of peripherals associated with gaming only work on the Windows. So it's not enough that your game can kind of play on the Linux. We also need all our fancy, you know, LEDs, you know, all our fancy controllers with all their fucking real bells. I know the Xbox controller works on the Linux, but you know, if you have like a steering wheel and steering stick and all that fucking, you know, flight controllers and all that fucking shit, like gaming headphones with LEDs spewing out the fucking ass of them, all of that you want to be part of your gaming experience. That's what Linux lack. So it's not close to be enough. Linux gaming keep growing. Again, previous statement. It don't matter if you can play all the games or, or as many games on Linux if it's not at least as good as on the Windows. I've been gaming on Linux since the before Proton. Like in the 90s, I gamed on Linux. Linux gaming have always been suffering from, yes, I can work this, I can use this program or this game, but, and the bots are, you have to tinker with it. Or, you get more stuttering. Your frame rates are fluctuating more than under Windows. You don't get the same fidelity quality. So if you are having a 980 or 990, a 980, 380, 390, 480, 490, and you want to use DSLR, ray tracing, all that fancy shit, that just works better on the Windows. And when you're spending thousands of dollars on a graphic card, why the fuck are you not going to use the technologies it provides? Do you think people, there are people out there, but do you think the majority of gamers are going to buy a graphic card they can get a fucking good secondhand car for, put it in their computer, installing Linux to only use 50% of the technologies as if it's on the Windows, and they still have to fucking fix the games and tweak the games and they get better, more stuttering for the most part in Linux. It's just, you know, they, you just don't get the same smooth experience in general in, in gaming on the Linux as you do on the Windows. On top of that, they can use their Razer program, their NVIDIA profiling program to help them set up the games. They can use, you know, the drivers that goes with their gaming headset and all that fucking shit. Uh, drivers, I mean, associated software that actually amplifies these say I can use these headsets on the Linux, but the software gives me a voice change. It gives me, if I'm using the mic, which I'm not, so I hit the microphone. The software is giving me AQ 
and all of these kind of things it's giving me um, if i'm playing a, a shooter it's giving me enhanced footsteps you know enhancement it will not work on the linux so it's not enough that the game kind of work or is 50 or 80 percent there no it needs to be 99 or 90.5 percent there plus all of the associated things that gamers do with gaming you know have with their gaming linux de desktops keeps improving so do windows <laughs> so do mac os again a linux fanboy's delusional thought is that well everyone is stuck with windows xp no when linux takes one step forward windows and mac os go five steps forward with usability stability and security if you're comparing the linux desktop with the microsoft desktop or the mac desktop they all improve. Every time Linux improves, KD improves, Norm improves, Windows improves, Mac OS improves. It's not a really good, like, speaking point here. It's like, yeah, Linux gets better over the, the, the years. Hey, Sherlock, <laughs> how many pains did it take to come up with this fucking shit? Of course it does. Like, it would be a problem. Like, you would be really fucking, like, angry if the Linux desktop didn't keep improving. There's something wrong in this picture here. If you're still using KDE and GNOME and XFCE from the 90s, and it just looks still. Like, that, that, yeah, maybe you should get those brain cells checked out, my friend. Microsoft and, and Apple drop support for older version or OS version. Again, not a problem. I, again, previous statement. People don't give a fuck. If they can use Mac OS X version that do exactly what they want, run the software that they want, or the Microsoft X version that is older, that do the exact what they want, and, and they can use the, the hardware they have with no problems whatsoever, they don't give a fuck. Humans take the path of least resistance. As that Saatchi Linux supports app, yeah, who gives, again, same, same fucking argument for why they're not going to do it on the, on the Mac OS. It's easy to try it out Linux than ever before, yeah, it's easy to try it, but it's not easy to live with it. That's the problem. You can install Linux really easy. Now the real work comes. Finding alternatives, learn a new operating system, learning new workflows and new programs that you have never used before. So not only are you learning a, a new operating system, you know, you're learning new programs, paradigms. It's like taking you and plopping you into society, like plopping you into like a hunter gatherer tribe. Not only are you in a new country, you are in a new environment. You are in. You have to learn new languages. You have to learn new customs. You have to learn new ways of living your fucking life. Where if I take you and you already speak English as your second language, and I plop you into like New York or England, yes, it would be difficult for you. But ninety percent of what you did already where you are right now is comparable and translatable into living in London or New York. Oh boy. Uh, it's easy to run Windows app and games on Linux. No, it's not. And again, we have to emulate it. Have it been easy? So it's easy to run Windows app and gaming on Linux, but it's not as easy as on the Windows. We have to deal with Vine. We have to deal with Proton. We have to deal with, oh, this Proton version works good for this game. This Proton version works better with another game. Now, I oh shit, I have to use the third party Proton for the third game. How is that easier than on the Windows where I just say download, install, play the game? I could use this version of fucking photoshop but i have to use a cracked version and i have to use this version of, of wine with wine bottles and blah 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 where on the windows i just download and install until linux become i just download and install until it becomes like that with what people with the programs people want to use it's not even close to being comparable to windows not even close chromebox ain't going away Fine, let's pretend Chromebook is Linux. Everything the Linux fanboy and this fucking article writer probably hates about Windows. Telemetry, data gathering, lockdown fucking environment, and so on and so on, is 100,000 times worse on Chrome OS or Android. There's no operating system out there in the world and its associated programs that are probing your collective asses more than fucking Chrome OS and Android. They probably know when you're going to take a shit next time, or pee, or when you're going to fuck your girlfriend or boyfriend. They know what fucking thing you're going to buy before you do it. So yeah, let's run Chrome OS and Android. Fucking good argument, Linux people. Or the Linux fanboy. Yeah, let, let's do that. Let, let's disregard all of the things we yell and scream about Mac OS and, 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 and Windows for, because it's running a heavily modified kernel version of Linux. 
Again, it's a fork, it's not Linux. The, the, when people come in with this argument here, I can't stop laughing at them. It's like, you do know that it's worse than running fucking Windows, and there's a lot of proprietary shit in Android and Chrome OS. Linux is strong in 2023 and beyond. No, it's not. Linux have not throw, shown any, any significant growth the last 20 years. Linux is, is one of those things, it's slowly, slowly, steadily growing a few, not even a percent a year, but a... 0 .0 or 0 0.1 is percent per year where windows and mac is like all over the fucking place if you if i gave you hundred thousand dollars and said you have to invest in this in those three operating systems meaning that depending on what the market share is in 10 years you will get that market share percentage on top of those hundred thousand dollars so if i gave you hundred thousand dollars say if you're investing in linux and linux is let's say five percent in 10 years you'll get five percent extra return 100,000 plus 5 percent if mac os is trends you'll get 100,000 plus 10 to 20 percent of those 100,000 in return you get the idea here i would bet that 99.9 .9 percent of people say yeah i'm betting on windows because they would almost get fucking you know 80 percent return like 100,000 plus 80 percent in return for for linux to have a chance a chance of competing with just mac os on the desktop the desktop market share for Linux has to drastically increase. And I'm not saying like, oh, let's go up to 5%. No, it has to go from where it is now to like 10%. And it has to do really fucking fast. So please stop fucking lying about Linux, okay? You are doing a disservice to the Linux community and to new potential users. If you're lying to them or exaggerating Linux, you will, 9 out of 10 times, give said person a really bad experience. This article here, if someone that was not technically inclined, was not that well versed in the whole global rating system fucking thing, they will read this and be like, fuck it, I'm going to install Linux because it's fucking amazing. It's like a apples to apples a comparison to Windows and so on and so on. They nuke the system, they run Linux, they will get their balls twisted and get angry and yell and scream about this author saying, telling them to do so, and they will never read a fucking other article for them again, and they will probably never touch Linux again. That's the most common experience that you can get if you believe stuff like this. If this is what you believe when you go into Linux, you believe everything said in here, you will be disappointed. You will be disappointed. It's just how disappointed, and can you live with how much disappointment you, you, you get. So round out there, I know a lot of people say, oh, we need Linux pre-installed on computers because that will then make Linux take over the desktop market. Linux has been pre-installed on laptops and computers since 2008-ish, if not even before that. That's over a decade. You have been able to go onto the internet and buy pre-installed Linux laptops and computers. It's done nothing to the Linux desktop market. Heck, Linux has even been sold, sold, in massive stores around the US of A. Good old freedom country. It has done so much for the adoption and adoption rate to Linux. Go look up GOS, GPCs, SandOS, Linspire, Lindos. All of those had computers and there's plenty more in, I think it was Walmart and stuff like that, where you can go in, walk in and buy a fucking Linux machine. That argument it's a dead horse. It's not a good argument. Dell, HP, and Lenovo have, at least since 2013, at least, before, well, I think even HP was like in 2008 or something like that, have sold or have given you the opportunity to choose Linux as your operating system on the machines. I myself yesterday tried to buy a Lenovo computer just for fun. One of those th uh, thin thing, uh, Lenovo M. 90, you know, the small form factor ones that compete with uh, Mac Mini. I could choose Linux in the fucking drop down menu for operating system. Non versions of Windows versions of Linux. That has been happening for over a decade, people. See you all later. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.